Hello wonderful person, this is Anton, and today we're going to be looking at the smallest uh, discovered black hole so far, known as IGRJ170913624. We actually got to visit it in one of the previous videos, but today we're going to find out how this particular black hole was created and what it actually has in its solar system. Let's find out in this video. Welcome to What The Math. And what we're going to do is we're going to actually start this video by going back in time several millions of years when the black hole was still a very large star. Very likely in a binary system that may have actually looked something like this. Two very large, very, very massive and uh, very bright stars. One was slightly more massive and slightly brighter than the other and the other one was slightly less so. So this was... Um, IGRJ 1901A and B. Now, with time, this particular star, the bigger star, very likely grew larger and larger, and possibly at some point uh, got really old and basically went supernova. So we're going to do that right now by initiating supernova as soon as the star gets, gets to a slightly larger mass. And we can actually do that by just doing this as well. So it went supernova, and as it went supernova, uh, the remainder of the mass basically shrunk into a very, 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 very tiny point uh, of about 12 kilometers in radius and became a black hole that we actually detect today. So this is how this particular black hole was made. But this was not the end, because now we also had this other star that was still orbiting around it, and uh, because uh, the black hole has now actually, uh, well, first of all, it was very small. It was only about, about 12 kilometers in radius. And second of all, it actually lost a lot of its mass. The orbital parameters of these two stars changed dramatically. And the black hole very likely started to orbit a lot closer to its partner star. And so we're going to recreate this by basically making it orbit a little bit closer and started to essentially slowly eat away at its partner's mass. And so over time, every time the uh, black hole approached its partner star, and most likely this would happen every, uh, every few days because the orbit here would actually decline pretty quick, it would actually take a huge chunk of, its, uh, of the partner's mass, and this would also create an accretion disk ar around the um, black hole. And so today we know that there's actually quite a lot of X-ray emissions coming from IGRJ-A. Um, oh, let's call it that. Let's call it Igrja for the lack of better name, because you know what, pronouncing all those numbers is kind of hard. So, Igrja, uh, the black hole, uh, orbiting around its partner Igrj-B, uh, would basically uh, create a very large accretion disk around itself, and would um, essentially produce quite a lot of X-rays through, um, through the generation of these really strong emission jets that we then detected on our planet Earth. Now, interestingly, over time though, uh, and this is over millions and possibly even billions of years because we're not really entirely sure how old this particular system is. Um, this star lost most of its mass. So this very large partner star started to shrink because all of its mass was being eaten away by its partner. And uh, at first, uh, this generated a lot of X-rays. This very likely was one of the brightest and one of the most active um, quasar-like black holes out there producing a lot, a lot of energy. But then this star started losing its mass, started to decrease in size, and eventually started turning into what it is today, basically into um, a red, uh, red dwarf. And so because of this black hole, this star has actually gone through uh, different stages of existence, going from what's likely was, what was likely um, a white giant or a blue giant, down to essentially what it is now, uh, a red dwarf, going through every single stage that we, we kind of know, including, of course, the orange star that you see here. And so all of this mass started to escape, making this, uh, this star smaller and smaller and smaller, as you can see right here. The mass actually decreases, making this um, a smaller and smaller object. And so every time the black hole passed, it lost a bit of an orbit, and every time it came back, it sort of... Um, took away less and less mass. So this particular decrease in size started to drop dramatically 
up until the point where it is now. So what we have right now in the system, it looks something like this. We essentially have the black hole orbiting around a remainder star, a red dwarf that's slowly losing mass uh, even now and uh, is creating a much, much smaller but still quite energetic accretion disk around this black hole. Now, let's see if we can actually create this um, now that we have a much smaller star here. And so I'm not really sure if this uh, disk is going to survive for a very long time, but let's actually see if we can run this simulation and okay, never mind. It kind of just disappeared. But anyway, so the accretion disk here uh, is still kind of really, really powerful, and the actual speed of these particles is like six percent um, uh, of the speed of light. It's actually really, really, really fast, and uh, this creates the fastest sort of wind speed in um, in the galaxy that we've discovered so far. Um, but uh, all of this is created by the matter that's essentially absorbed from this star in the background right there, uh, also known as IGRJ, the Red Dwarf. Now, with time, um, this black hole will very likely absorb the rest of the mass from this, and it might actually turn into a gas giant or basically a planet. So, over time, over the next millions and possibly billions of years, this particular system might actually look completely different. It might actually turn into something that looks like this. So there is our uh, red uh, dwarf that became a gas giant. And so this is very likely the future of this system. So this might actually become a very large uh, gas giant that will also uh, transition through the, uh, through the brown dwarf stage, essentially creating a black hole with uh, a planetary system. And so this star will very likely one day become a planet. Or at least that's the science behind it, and this is what we think might happen one day. And this actually is what happened to very, very many black hole systems that used to have companion stars. And we think there's like close to a billion of these black holes out there that we just don't see anymore. So there might be even a smaller black hole than the one that you see here. But as of now, this is officially the smallest black hole I've discovered. It's about three to five masses of sun. And this is essentially the smallest theoretical limit for a stable black hole. Hopefully now you know how this black hole was created and what is going to become of it in the future. And hopefully you will subscribe if you still haven't and come back tomorrow to learn something else about science, math, or possibly space. I'll see you guys tomorrow. And maybe consider supporting this channel on Patreon because it does help you produce better videos. Anyway, I'll see you guys in the next video. Let's just accelerate time and see what happens to the system and possibly... Reduce the orbital parameters of this particular planet to basically almost touch the black hole. And I think I did it too fast. And let's see what actually happens to the system if I decelerate time here and make them orbit really, really close to each other. And there you go. Anyway, I'll see you guys tomorrow. Space out. Bye-bye. And there you go. This is the accretion disk I was trying to create. This is beautiful. Why wouldn't this work in the first place, huh? Anyway, it's beautiful now. Awesome. Bye-bye.